All right, guys, we're here in the Fins and Feathers office, um, just a, about a week and a couple days out from my fight. Um, I posted something uh, recently on my Instagram and wanted to do a Q&A with you guys on my YouTube page. So uh, you guys left a bunch of comments or uh, questions in the comments, and I'm going to go through them right now and just answer them for you guys. Uh, just, you know, something pretty chill, relaxed, casual, and uh, get these things answered. Let's see what we got. First question <laughs> from Aaron. Uh, this is a, Aaron's a guy that actually came on our Fins and Feathers elk hunt this last year in Oregon. He shot his first bull with a super cool guy. Uh, he says, who's going to shoot the biggest bull on our elk trip this year? Bonus question, what's it going to score? So, uh, it, he's actually coming to Colorado with us. He's going to do our mule deer and uh, elk hunt. So, I'm going to say I'm shooting the biggest bull and it's going to be a 340 bull, Aaron. So, I'll, don't, I'll let you hold it, buddy. I'll let you hold that up. <laughs> All right, next question. When's your next fight? So we are looking at next Saturday, February 19th. I'm headed to Florida. Uh, I'm making my bare knuckle boxing debut. I'm going to go send it. Full send, baby. February 19th. Someone says, do you miss fighting in the octagon? Um, honestly, I, I do miss it a little bit, but I, I definitely had my solid run. I feel pretty good about it. Um, I'm excited to try something different, something new, jumping over to straight boxing and it's bare knuckle. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't get any crazier than that, I guess the only crazier thing in my opinion is what I've been seeing lately is bare knuckle straight MMA. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, but uh, we'll see. I'm gonna get in there and go full send. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna like it, I might hate it, but I've been in some fist fights, I've been hit bare knuckle, it doesn't feel good, but uh, I can guarantee you I'm going to hit harder than this guy. So <laughs> I just got to get in there and land him. We'll see what happens. Someone says, why'd you stop MMA? Lately I see you're doing a lot of boxing. What's the reason? Will you ever come back to MMA? Um, so the reason for stopping MMA was just the pay wasn't worth it for the damage I was putting myself through. Uh, just the amount of training and just I started a couple other businesses and was making the same amount of money or more doing that. Uh, doing stuff in the outdoor industry, which I absolutely love. So I uh, stepped away from it and this huge opportunity came out for a big payday. Um, and because I'm young enough, I'm still, you know, mid thirties, I'm young, I'm in my prime. I'm going to take this opportunity and get in there and beat someone up for some big bucks. Uh, and then, no, I don't know. I don't know if I'll come back to MMA. Basically it, it would have to be, I'm still under UFC contract. I still have three fights on my contract. So, um, I basically would have to renegotiate that because what, what it's at right now, not a chance. Someone says, can you do training camp vlogs showing your strength and conditioning program and actual technique breakdowns for the YouTube channel? Huge fan, thank you. Yes, I can. We're actually starting to do some of these uh, YouTube videos for the last week, week and a half up to my fight. But um, man, I, I will try my best to do it with two kids running multiple businesses, training for a fight. Uh, it's it's been tough, especially with as much traveling I'm about to start doing, but um, if I can sit there and break all that stuff down, film it, edit it for you guys and get it up, I will definitely try. Uh, someone says, what are the benefits to wild game and building muscle recovery slash recovery compared to other meats uh, coming from a hunter? Um, I mean, I think that the main benefit for wild game meats is just knowing where it come from. There's, you know, you, it's not pumped with all kinds of hormones and all kinds of crazy stuff that these, a lot of these cattle, um, people in the cattle industry just tend to use. Uh, but I mean, really it's, you know, protein, it's a great protein source. It's lower in fat, which can be good, but animal fat, animal fat, in my opinion, is, is very beneficial for somebody, uh, training at the elite level, you know, keeping your male hormones in check, keeping your testosterone raised, um, you know, your saturated fats, all that stuff is good for that. So, um, there's a ton of new studies coming out. You know, we've been taught for years, and I know I have been since I was a little kid, that fat is bad. Stay away from fat. It's fat free. That means it's good for you. But uh, in recent studies, they're showing a lot of grains and all your processed foods and your sugars. That's the killer. That's all the silent killer. So um, there's a ton of research coming out that meat, uh, the correlation between meat and coronary heart disease and that type of stuff is non-existent so um, just do your research but 
I do eat a lot of wild game. Um, if I'm eating a ton of wild game, I always substitute fat, whether it's olive oil, avocado, uh, but then also the American almond beef, which is loaded with very, very high quality fat. So uh, I'm definitely mixing both in for sure. Do you have any idea who you're fighting yet? And do you think you'll be the headliner for the main card? I'm ready to see you put some hands on some fool. So I'm fighting um, Joshua Alvarez and it's February 19th. So it's been set for a while now. Um, and uh, it's in Florida. So next Saturday, if you guys want to tune in, you can head over to uh, the Bare Knuckle app. It's uh, BKFC. Um, you download the app and then basically you could either subscribe a yearly subscription. And I think it's $4.99 a month or you guys are just interested in seeing my fight you can subscribe just for february so it's 4.99 and you can watch the fight there you guys can either stream it from your phone to your smart tv or probably even just download the app on your smart tv um, or computer <laughs> this is a good one you told me you didn't want to get punched in the face anymore you were done this was at the sack hunt expo a couple years ago what changed you savage um well nothing really changed i still don't really want to get punched <laughs> like it's not anything i'm craving it's you know it hurts it doesn't feel good uh, the idea is not getting punched but um, yeah I mean this is like I said earlier this is a huge opportunity for a payday that I feel like all pay all fighters should at least be getting um, uh, you know I didn't want to get punched for what I was getting paid before but I would take the risk to get in there and, and get hit a little bit for this so but ideally the goal is to get in there and hit this guy before he hits me and uh, get paid. We'll see. You know, fighting's a hell of a game. Anything can happen. So uh, we're gonna give her hell February nineteenth. All right. So we're moving over to Bunny Face's phone now. He's pulling up <laughs> his Facebook. So um, here's a really good question. What specific recovery measures do you do post workout? Uh, sauna, ice bath, compression, and do you eat differently during the training block versus normal? Not so much calorie intake, but type of food. Go get him, my man. So my main sources of recovery through a training camp, I do uh, cryotherapy, do the chamber, I do some localized stuff if I have any bumps and bruises. Um, I do massages. I, I mean, typically I'm trying to get at least a massage once a week. Uh, it doesn't always happen. Um, making sure I'm taking, you know, my beef liver pills and staying up on all my like supplements as far as vitamins and all that stuff. Um, just trying to stay as healthy as possible, especially with as crazy as it, it's been in the world the last two years. So, um, you know, just staying as healthy as I can, trying not to get sick through camps. Um, and those are my pretty, pretty much uh, my main sources of recovery. Also sleep, uh, I, I make sure I'm getting at least eight hours of sleep if it means I gotta go to bed super early or, you know, whatever it may take. But, um, you know, trying to juggle, you know, two kids and family life with sleep can be tough, but you just gotta make it a priority. And then, do you eat differently during a training block versus normal? I do. Um, uh, depending on where my weight is, I mean, I typically stick to a strict, um, pretty strict diet, and I, I don't necessarily focus on only eating specific things. Um, I mean, I guess I do. It's a, it's a clean regimen of stuff. Um, and it's kind of too much to really talk about now, but basically what I'm doing is, you know, I'm spacing my meals out, um, you know, anywhere from two to three hours a meal, you know, I'm getting five to six meals in a day, um, just making sure my metabolism is going just full bore all day long, um, depending on the time of the day, uh, whether it's pre-workout, post-workout, depends on what types of foods I'm eating, you know, a post-workout meal, obviously I'm eating a lot of fast-burning carbs, uh, you know, anywhere from 60 to 70 grams for my body of, you know, uh, a potato or uh, white rice or something like that that's really gonna spike my insulin uh, and like four to five ounces of, of a lean protein, um, which drives that into your muscles, helps with recovery um, and whatnot. Basically, I do f follow a strict diet through my training camp. Um, outside of a training camp though, I mean, I typically try to stay to a healthy diet. Like I'm, I'm not really, maybe eat fast food twice a year maybe um, you know don't get me wrong I'll splurge with a, a dessert here and there I'm not really a sweet guy but um, I'm, a, I'm a salty guy if I'm gonna cheat on anything I want like a, a full bag of chips with like a big like a dip or something and I'll just go to town on that but 
Um, typically it's tons of wild game, you know, I'm hunting pretty much year round. So living off lean, uh, organic free range meat, uh, which I eat a lot of that. Um, and then we do grow our own vegetables in our garden. Um, I did just, uh, try this carnivore diet for a four month stint to help with my psoriasis and it helped tremendously. So, uh, as far as the vegetable game goes, I have cut out a ton of that stuff as well, along with grains. Um, have introduced a few here and there throughout this camp just for uh, athletic purposes and just seeing what makes me feel good and what doesn't. Eating some whole oats here and there, um, mostly fruits um, and some brown rice and some potatoes and sweet potatoes, um, which those aren't grains, but um, there are nat nightshades that some sometimes affect psoriasis. To me, it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be doing too much for me. So I will, I have some big stuff in the works. I'm gonna tell you guys this now. Uh, with a, a, a company that I work closely with um, that has something to do with uh, nutrition and meals and diet plan um, and I'm, I'm gonna leave it right there but um, for anybody that's interested just keep on the journey we're probably six months to a year out on that I'm guessing but <clears throat> we got some really cool uh, cutting-edge stuff in the fitness and uh, meal prep industry coming your way so stay tuned on that Thank <laughs> you.